Hi, I'm Max Cooper. Uh, I'm an act on Try Michelle Platten. It was when I was living in uh, Nottingham, in England. Um, I was living with uh, Gareth Williams from uh, Line, the company that makes Grid and lots of amazing software for the iPad and the iPhone. I lived with him at that point, I didn't produce at all, and I would, I would go into, in, into his studio and sort of try and play with things and not know what I was doing, you know. I'd been into electronic music for a long time before that, but always as a, a clubber, you know, I started off in the sort of late 90s, you know, getting into the club scene in the, in the UK and sort of going to all the big raves and, and then I, I started DJing at the same time straight away. I, I fell in love with DJing, you know, and all I wanted to do was DJ, DJ, DJ. Uh, and that's how I got to know Gareth, you know, for, at university I was DJing at the clubs in Nottingham and he was involved as well because he was into electronic music. Uh, production was something I never even considered doing. It was uh, really when I started producing, I, I started because I wanted to get more gigs and it was all about just wanting to DJ. Whereas now it's the other way around, you know, I, I DJ so that I can spend my time at home during the week, you know, writing music. The transition to DJ from just the clubber to DJ happened straight away, very naturally. The transition from DJ to producer happened as a sort of forced thing where I wanted to you know, get more gigs and it was like, you know, uh, and uh, the transition from a producer just writing any sort of music to someone to the sort of more conceptual side of what I'm into these days happened. Um, I'm not really sure how it happened. I mean, I was always really into you know science, and I was studying science all the way through and doing research, and it was something that I always was really into. Um, and I don't know, it might have. It, I think my first releases on Trime it might have been a big factor in the sort of bringing together of the conceptual with the you know the music production side, probably because Riley Reinhold, who's sitting behind the camera, probably asked me you know about concepts and want me to provide more depth and you know as soon as I started doing that it sort of seemed to fit very naturally and it all sort of came together very naturally in terms of the music that I made as a result and the, how the you know and so I think that was probably a big influence on you know strengthening the conceptual side of things. At first a lot of my older tracks especially and you know and some new ones as well I'll spend a long time over and I'll constantly you know, go over tiny, tiny milliseconds and changing it and going over and making edits and making edits and making edits and it's like a really sort of painstaking process. Um, more recently, I've actually started getting into uh, using a lot of Max for Live, uh, which is uh, you know, Max MSP is a programming language that plugs into Ableton. Well, it's, it's a standalone thing, but there's a module which functions within Ableton that allows you to have a lot more control over all the parameters and everything in Ableton and I found that actually I'm learning some interesting techniques now that allow me to generate a lot more complexity without having to sort of do it by hand and so actually I'm that's I mean it gives a slightly different sound and it's like I'm not going to completely it's a, it, that's what I'm toying with at the moment but you know looking over my tracks that I've released over the last two or three years generally it's been painstaking you know a long time spent sort of going over and obsessing about things and you know Making tiny edits and tiny edits, but more recently I've started. I've got a few releases coming out soon, um, which are a bit more, you know, based on slightly higher level sort of functions, which allow you to generate more randomization and you know get the get the software to do a bit more of the work for you, which you know is great. But it gives a slightly different sound. But you know, it's something I'm, I'm experimenting with the two approaches at the moment. The main thing I would say is that. I would start off writing a track. I'll get the sort of structure done. I'll get the skeleton done quickly, very quickly. So I'll, I'll make a sort of, I'll know the vibe I want to go with, and I'll try and get that vibe done on, on you know on the computer as quickly as I can. And generally, without the detail, I just want to get the general feeling down, the melodies and the chords and the, the sort of bit, the fundamental rhythmical elements. And once I've got that vibe done, then I can you know then I can go to the through the weeks or you know the time, the long time of adding all the details afterwards without having to worry about. Uh, as long as I don't affect the vibe too much, you know, it's about laying that original vibe down quickly. Whiskers FX is the guy that I've worked with a lot um, for my visuals, um, Andy Brewer. Uh, I know him from, he was doing visuals you know, when I was living in Nottingham and he was doing club visuals and amazing artwork for you know, flyers and various other projects. Um, and I just met him you know, through DJing there and we got talking. Um, and. Really, I had 
I had a very clear idea of what I wanted for my videos, and I've always, every time I do a music video, I have a clear brief. That I'll send, I'll send the the artists, you know, my interests, what I, you know, and a, a specific brief about the concept of the track and the concept for, you know, what a loose framework with it, what you know, within which they can work. Um, and I'll let them come back to me with ideas, and if I don't think it's right, then I'll say, no, we need to change it. So I, I, it's a matter of me being quite um, brutal and sort of you know, making sure it comes out, you know, fitting within the, the style that I, you know, I want it to be. When I'm studying science, I'm looking at a system um, and trying to figure out what the, you know, get, gain a sort of feeling for how the parts interact and you, you, you obviously your mathematicians will you know, they don't gain a feeling for it they'll you know, have a quantitative model for how things in you know the relationships between different aspects of a system uh, that's not really how I worked when I was doing my science I was more using computer programs to you know simulate things and then you know, looking at how the outcomes and getting a feeling for how the system works you know this you know, genetics basically so how these molecular systems work and I find with a piece of music you get a similar when you're listening to a piece of music or composing a piece of music you get a similar feeling for how the parts should interact you know how melodies should progress and how the different parts fit together it's almost like there is i mean it, you know music is itself a very mathematical thing and there's you know very defined you know, there's rules between how things interrelate and how they progress and it's a bit based on expectations and how the expectations are broken or fulfilled and you know there's you can there's the whole books and studies and mm. you know it's a whole field of you know academia on this sort of thing um, but you get a very strong feeling i find for how things should fit together and it's it's a, the system in itself thinking about it in that way is very similar to a scientific system It sounds a lot nicer in, in German, you know. It was as simple as that. It, it just sounded nicer, so I, I went with that, and it seemed to fit, you know, with the label and yeah. yeah. My parents are Australian, uh, but I grew up in Northern Ireland in Belfast. Uh, at the time, there was obviously the, the whole uh, Catholic Protestant issue, you know, and all the schools were either Catholic or Protestant, you know, and you, you went to one sort of school and you get taught a certain thing and you went to another school and you got taught another thing and my parents you know, didn't want to sort of give me, you know, push me one way or the other, so the Steiner School was the only school in the whole of Northern Ireland that wasn't divided, you know, according to religion. Um, so they sent me to that and it turned out that it was quite an interesting, you know, form of education as well. It was a lot more creative and um, a different, you know, really relaxed, you know, a nice, a nice atmosphere to sort of grow up and go to school in. Um, so, uh, yeah, I enjoyed it there. Oliver Arnold's. I mean, I love Max Richter and Third Class as well. They're all, all up there for me, but Oliver Arnold's that last album, it's just, it's the thing I've listened to the most out of any music. For the last probably two years, I've listened to his album way, way more than anything else. It's just beautiful. You know, it's mainly just piano, solo and strings, um, just really nice to listen to and like, when I'm at home I don't listen to techno or I listen to relaxed sort of electronic, uh, um, you know, modern classical crossover stuff and yeah. It's funny, like people always ask me like, have you heard this actor, have you heard this thing and I'm, I'm quite, so I'm surprisingly uneducated, I don't like, I, I generally find like one thing that I love and I'll sort of like listen to it and listen to it and listen to it and get obsessed about it, you know. And like I'll have, I'll have you know, I've got a reasonably big music collection, but I'll there'll only at any one time there's like only like five albums that I'm listening to, you know. I'll just listen to those five all the time. <laughs> 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 it's, I, I, no, no.